Okay. So I want to hit on something. Now we're going to talk about being led by the Spirit. What does it mean to be led by the Spirit? This is where we fall short as believers. Because we don't know what the Spirit's telling to us, what the Spirit's telling us. Sometimes we wait. What's he saying? Well, I just don't know if that's God. Maybe that's me. Maybe that's influence. Maybe that's the men of God telling me I need to do something. And this is touchy. I'm going to give you a little illustration that I did last night that's going to set you free. We already learned about the house. Right about sin. Okay. Now we're going to talk about how you know if it's God telling you. It's going to be so simple. It's going to mess you up. Okay. When God gives you a leading, does it line up with Scripture? 50%? 100? So why don't we just do Scripture then? We like that. Why don't we just do Scripture then? That way we don't have to question whether it's the Spirit or not. You know why we don't do it? You don't want to look stupid, really. What if it doesn't happen? What if it does? Here's what I tell people. Let's say I'm the pastor of this church. And what's your name? James. I hired James. James, I'm going to hire you as a custodian. Okay. Here's a list. What I want you to do. And he goes over it with you. First, James, I want you to vacuum. And then when you're done, I want you to dust the equipment. And then when you're done, I want you to mop the floors. And then when you're done, I want you to turn off the lights. And then when you're done, I want you to lock up the door and leave. Put the key in the back. Okay. And so I go to my office. I got a lot of work to do. And here comes James. He starts vacuuming. He vacuums everything. And he gets done. And he goes to my office. Yeah? It's James. Hey, what's going on, James? Yeah, I'm done. What do I do next? Okay. Come out here with him. Yeah, you vacuumed, you're right. Yeah, you did a good job. Hey, yeah, did, did you uh, dust the uh, equipment? Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, sorry. And then he goes, dust. Then he's What's going on, James? Yeah, I'm done with that. What's next? Mm, okay, hey, uh, yeah, did you, did you mop? Oh, yeah, that's right. Ooh, okay, I didn't know if I was going to do that, right? Hey, he goes to mom's. What? What, James? I'm out. Okay, what do I do next? Dude, do you have the list? Yeah, it's right here. Okay, when you're done doing that, remember I told you to turn off the lights? And put the key. In fact, give me the key, dude. <laughs> Get out of here. There's your list. The doctrine. Those who do the work will know the doctrine. Be a doer of the word. But I just don't know if uh, if I'll do it right. You're not going to do it right. That's why I came. But I might mess up. Yeah? You're going to mess up. That's why I said, if you do sin, you have an advocate with the Father. You're going to mess up. You know, I tell people all the time, like they say, you know, I pray for people. And I don't see none. So I'll stop. So what you're saying is that you're being disobedient with no results. 
How about you being obedient with no results? Does that make sense? Man, oh, no. don't get me wrong. I don't pray for everybody I see. I go to Walmart. I'm with my wife. There's just days I can't do it. Okay? I love my wife. Sometimes she just wants to go out. She wants to have lunch. She wants to enjoy her husband. Jesus enjoyed his bride, too, guys. There was times they had time together. There was times he shut it down. He had to because he had to have fellowship. This is why Jesus didn't walk around through this whole New Testament healing everybody all day long. He couldn't do that because he had relationships to fulfill. He had things he had to do. It wasn't just about healing for him. And it can't be just about healing for you either. Okay, I don't just heal all day long. I laugh, I joke, I cry, I hug on people, I love on people. Why? Because it's not all about healing, guys. The Jesus in you will let you know if you trust him. And it's not just, I don't, I don't want to leave here today saying you have to go heal the sick. I'm not saying that. You can do whatever you want. And I'm okay with that. Really. I am. And I'm sure God is too, because he loves you. But what propels us is knowing that we can actually make a difference somewhere. Yes, yes. You know, there was a story of this guy that he was in the ocean, you know, he was, he was a dishwasher, and he would go to the ocean every day at his lunchtime, he had an hour lunch, and there was a bunch of clams being washed up ashore, and he would just start throwing them into the ocean one at a time. And there was a fisherman watching him. Every day he'd see him. Why are you doing this? It doesn't matter. This is too many. He would just ignore him and just throw them in there. And he did that for about a week. And then he went up to him, he went all the way down there, and he says, what are you doing? It don't matter. You throw that in there, and there'll be two more in this place. You pick one up, and he says, it mattered to that one. <laughs> it mattered to that one. <laughs> the problem is that we look at the whole picture, we kind of forget that God's in control of that, not us. We throw seed, man. Even if it's one seat at a time. Yeah. Some will throw handfuls. All right. <laughs> Those years I threw nothing. Wow. One guy he went up to and he said, you know, you work in my field, I'll pay you a day's wages. He was there all day. And one guy's only there looking.